<coughs> We're on. We are on. <laughs> Hi, Emily Miller. Hi, Kate Richbrick. How are you today? I'm really good. Good. It's Wednesday. I know. It Live. must be Facebook Live from beadshop.com. <laughs> I know you were looking at my hands. I know everyone's looking at my hands. Can you guys show see them, these? Show them your hands. I had to show you while everybody's jumping on. It's a little gift. I got a little gift from Emily today, and I had to put them on right away. I are thought you, you would like those. Well, you know, I love things that are vintage. Let me hold it and in embroidered. my hand like this. Vintage and embroidered. And so you gifted me this morning this mm -hmm. lovely pair of kid gloves. Embroidered kid skin gloves. From your mom's yeah. glove box. Yeah. That's so nice. I love them so much. So well, they thank didn't you. fit me, and it was sort of disappointing, and so I thought maybe you'd like them. I, you know. Well, I thought you'd like them. I, I do knew you'd love like them. them. <laughs> I seem to be... Uh, the receiver of all of my family's vintage gloves. I have my oh, grands, my my mom's, my auntie Annie's, some of mine when I was little. So I just had to wear them. I feel very, you know, very chic. Very chic. Very royal wedding. Let's see what it says. Maybe I can here. wear them at the royal wedding when I get my um, no. when I get my made invite. in France. Made in France. Six and three quarters is your glove size. Of France. Six and that's three quarters. Right. Is Six and three size. quarters. That's yeah. right. My glove size. That's right. Just in case you needed to know. It is so true. <laughs> well, you guys, I hope. There we go. Oh, yeah, I see me wearing my glove. Uh, <laughs> let's <laughs> clock in and see who everyone's here. Hello, everybody. It's great to see you all and welcome. I guess I can f I can take off this glove now because we've got, before we've you got things to do on right it before or, or, or bead <laughs> into it. But thank you, Emma. I love You're them very so welcome. very much. My pleasure. I'm going to put them here very, very carefully. Um, okay, well, it's great to see you all. We have so much to do today. I know, it's going to be a it's busy morning. It's going to be so much fun. I love this project. And you taught me how to beat crochet many did years I? ago. You did, remember? We were in Tucson and we were beat crochet. Oh, Colin, you're that? right. You're Way right. You and me day. and Cynthia mm -hmm. and a bunch of other gals. A bunch of other people. We were having were, a slumber party we in were, Tucson. And bead crocheting like crazy. It was really <laughs> fun. Um, but before we get to that, uh, we have, I actually have one really special viewer mail today. It's from um, one of our viewers, Suzanne. And, you know, uh, one of the things that has really happened over this year plus that we've been doing this Facebook Live is it really feels like we're bringing, bringing our bead world closer together, smaller, right? For sure. Which is, I think, a really amazing, amazing thing. And so I got an email this morning from Suzanne, uh, Suzanne, who is in Finland, who watches us uh, in the evening over there. And she sent me this sweet note. She said, hi, Kate. I can't join you on today's Facebook Live because we are celebrating our 100-year anniversary of our country, Finland. She wished us, she said, so have a nice time with all the other beaters. That's you. <laughs> and she said tonight, but then she put in parentheses morning because she knew we were going to be in the morning. So, Suzanne, Suzanne, I, in honor of uh, Finland's centennial that you're celebrating, I thought I'd give you guys a few facts because it's really, it's great. It's Finland's 100th Independence Day today, and you guys are celebrating. Um, it is. It's gonna. It was celebrated throughout 2017. Oh, good. The whole year. Then. The whole year they had celebrations, and the theme of the centennial year was together, which I thought Super was really amazing, really appropriate, and it just brings all of us together. And um, it says here Finland's Independence Day. Um, it's written in Finnish that I cannot uh, pronounce at all. It's a national public holiday and flag day, and it's held on December 6th to celebrate Finland's Declaration of Independence from Russia in 1917. Huh? And so Suzanne no. also sent me a really great photo of the flag of Finland Flying waving. high. Okay. Isn't Lovely. that awesome? Yeah. I'm going to zoom in on that. Zoom in on that. So yep. happy... Independence Day and Finland. 100 years to Finland. I love that. Yeah. We wouldn't be celebrating today if it no. were not for Suzanne. That's right. We wouldn't have known. No. So it was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. So way to go, Finland. Hope you're having a great time today, Suzanne, and we'll see you on the replay. I'm, I'm so tickled that we have people from all over the world. It, it I'm going to move this It just kind of is friend. amazing to it's me that we get folks that are staying up late or getting up early or... Right. Watching knowing, this come knowing all that, over, yeah. Knowing they need to get home and watch us. 
we just really, really appreciate it's it. It's really great. It's really awesome. Well, we are also really pleased to have Verandwin back behind the camera. We are getting uh, dug out. We are getting right caught up <laughs> uh, after our big Thanksgiving sales. So thankfully, we have Brandwin yeah. womaning the camera again, which is great. Um, we've got Janice, I think, on the other side doing some. Um, do, there she is. I see her doing some uh, moderating from uh, the other coast, and uh, so we're going to be ready to go. Um, so let's uh, let's just jump in because okay. this is going to be a big a big one. So, so I'm this, going to this was of course my project. Yeah, which, and I want you to talk a little bit about I will. how I will. it how it all came about. You know. Um, when I learned how to bead crochet, it took me a few tries. Mm -hmm. I didn't get it on the first try, mm -hmm. which I realized that anytime you learn something new, yeah. you have to kind of, but I had already been beading for a long time and I was really mad at myself that I couldn't get it right I'm away. I'm the same way <clears throat> when I can't. So I'm like, hey. I picked it up, put it down, picked it up, put it down right. a few times. And finally, when I saw this one little tip, it made the light bulb come on over my head and mm -hmm. it was like, okay, now everything works and it's perfect. Oh, that's great. So that was a really a nice thing for me. And you're going to share that light bulb moment oh, with us. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I know you will. Yep. And I wanted to translate it in, into some classes mm -hmm. and, and bring it to other people. And it, it's so funny when you sit down as a teacher to teach something to someone else, you learn. I learn as much from teaching you as you learn from me. <laughs> right. Because yeah. I'm, I'm looking at it at a more critical way mm -hmm. and, and certainly in a slower way. And from the eyes of the student yep. too, because you always have to think, well, what am I missing? Who knows nothing? Right. Or uh, you have to assume they know nothing. Miss a step. Right. Yeah. Right. So you get very, um, you do get very focused on your project. Mm -hmm. You get very, really, really into it. Mm -hmm. The other thing that um, kind of inspired me with this particular technique is that I have always really appreciated African trade beads. Yes. And you know, Janice and I went to the Trade Bead Museum and I have to tell yes. you, I was walking about a foot off the ground the entire time yes. I was there. Well, I those spent are a some of, bunch of money. <laughs> those are some of the first beads when I started buying beads. Yeah. African yeah. trade beads were some of my first I was beads that I ever bought. I was fascinated by that phrase. I was fascinated by the idea of that beads went from Europe, all over Europe, mm -hmm. you know, Bohemia mm -hmm. and the Czech Republic mm -hmm. and Germany and Italy mm -hmm. and France, went from all those places to Africa mm -hmm. and they were traded. Mm -hmm. They were literally traded for things. Mm -hmm. um, and then where did all those beads go? Mm -hmm. You know, they went as ballast in the mm -hmm. ships. Mm -hmm. So normally they would take rocks and throw them down there, mm -hmm. but the beads were packed in there. And mm -hmm. they, so they took millions of beads mm -hmm. to Africa. And slowly those beads have been coming out of Africa, mm -hmm. and they're coming both into Europe and to the Americas. When we saw John and Ruth Picard down at, at the Bead Museum, mm -hmm. they were one of the first people to really recognize how beautiful they were and yeah. start importing and them again. And they've written a lot of uh, yeah. books and stuff Seven about books, them. I think. Yeah. yeah, and so Janice, I know, just listed um, in the uh, in the notes here the Picard Trade oh, Museum, good. so you guys can yeah. see a little more uh, a little more about that. So, but yeah, it was. I think it's just so incredible. And so you have actually some yeah, beads. Yeah, I have some some trade here beads that and we want to. And this is kind of was your inspiration. for Yes, these absolutely. You know, I've really found that one of the things I like about trade beads, not only the romantic name and all that idea, is that when you handle them. They're not perfect, mm -hmm. and they're sometimes dirty, um, mm -hmm. literally have dirt on mm -hmm. them. Um, the dirt of many lands. But they've been handled by hundreds of people, perhaps, mm -hmm. over the years. So these are probably beads made anywhere from late late 1800s through 1920s or 30s mm -hmm. or 40s, mm -hmm. something in that range. And these are seed beads, mm -hmm. um, and so they're made with the same techniques that are made today. Mm -hmm. The hole down the middle of the bead is a long rod. It's cut into chunks. And then those edges are sanded down, tumbled, tumbled down. down. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you get the strands, they're a little bit mixed. So I tend to look for those because we like those are kind of, of my favorites. And this little stripe, I know how much you like a stripe. Right. And, these and look at those, those little, little, funny, little funny stripe ones in mm -hmm. the middle that don't match, right? Mm -hmm. And they're sometimes really the size will change in a mm -hmm. strand. You'll get just a few kind of bumpy ones mm -hmm. that, that really turn me on. The thing is, though, that these beads are kind of hard to find. They are, and they're expensive. They are. So when Janice wanted to propose this project and wanted me to really do this, and we'd gotten lots of information from the students who were interested in it, we started looking for trade beads. And that right. was one of the reasons we went to Picard's, was to look at their beads. Mm -hmm. But it turns out that they're really they're pretty expensive to get in this quantity that we right. would need. 
Um, and they're hard to get consistently. And so you know yeah. that whenever you go somewhere and you buy something and you want to buy it again, it's painful. Hard to find. And painful it's a if challenge. we don't have it again. When we sell things online at beadshop.com, we know that you yeah. guys want consistency. We want consistency. So our our solution for that right. was... Was to make a mix of beads that are new, mm -hmm. but in the flavor and spirit of those older beads. Right. And so we've added some beads to our product line yeah. that are... From the Czech Republic. Yep. And the way that they come uh, is just like this in these little bags. So these are going to look different than the beads you're used to because they Not come Japanese, on Not Japanese, right. Because you guys, a lot of us are used to working with Japanese seed beads mm -hmm. that are very regular. Uh, the whole size is very regular. The size and the shape of the beads are very regular. Kind of squared off. Kind of, right. Yeah, and these are a little more donut -y. Uh, Yeah, and the, the so I should turn this the right way. The ones that we're getting, the traditional Czech beads we're getting, come on hanks like this, right. like you're holding. So you have this long strand, and you get, I think it's six strands mm -hmm. in these hanks. And, you know, I can show you a couple of these hanks side by side, and amongst the colors, you're actually going to see a little variation in size. Mm -hmm. So I'll, let, I'll hold this up for Brandon and let her zoom in on that a little bit. So these are two beads that are... Um, come to us as the same size bead, mm -hmm. but the red ones... And these ones, are a size 11. Size 11. Mm -hmm. The red ones are a bit smaller than mm -hmm. the purple ones, and you can see that pretty clearly. And it's typical that you're going to have some, some variations with their Czech beads. They, they're they just not made the same fashion, same style as Japanese, so they're not right. as perfect and regular. You will find some, what I like to call fats and skinnies, mm -hmm. as you go along through these. So skinnies, um, beads that are really narrow, I tend to discard. Well, right, I don't because, discard, no, but I put but them they, to the side. Yeah, because they don't fill in your space as much. Right. I'll hand you that Thank in, you. in case you need And um, with things that are very irregular, where there's a lumpy one side bigger than the other side. Mm -hmm. I also discard those. Mm -hmm. I don't use those for my beads. So I see a skinny, I see a skinny right here. The super skinny. Can you see that one? I don't know, Bran. That's a skinny. That's a skinny if I've ever seen one. I don't want to, right? Isn't that a yeah. skinny? Right yeah. there. Bam. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some irregularity, which I sort of like in in the project, mm -hmm. but um, the two irregular, more more obviously irregular ones I kind of you throw discard. to the side. Yeah. 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 And so let's take a look at one of your finished ropes over here, Anne, Sure. Because you can kind of... You want to look at today's kind of, project? Yeah, let's do that. Sure. So this is what I called Out of Africa, one of my favorite movies, and Kate's as well. We, it is true. We bond over that on, it on is the true. regular. It um, is true. I wanted my whole wardrobe. When I watched that movie, I was like, I'm changing my whole wardrobe that hat. to Meryl Streep, yeah. circa early 1900s. Yeah. yeah it Pre-World War One. Yeah, yeah. That whole, those hats. The hats and the... The bush clothes and yeah. the riding job yeah. first. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay, I yeah. need to come right. back. Okay, oh, right. I'm back. <laughs> I had a moment. So, out of Africa, um, in in the sense that I picked out colors that were a little bit of age, had a little bit of age to appeal to them. Um, these are soul gel beads. So these are actually mm -hmm. dyed or tinted on the outside, mm -hmm. and I really like how that doesn't quite look so bright and shiny. Right. It's a little bit of the the antidote to the bright and shiny. Mm -hmm. um, I did play around with mixing in. Um, the beads to one another because they come unmixed, so you have to do that yourself. And I played around also, also with the shapes and sizes because yeah. they've got some bigger and smaller shapes side by side. I really like a striped bead, and um, yeah, the stripes. If, I'll show you some more pieces in a minute, and you'll see that oh, look, there's some lots of striped beads there. Mm -hmm. So we have these beautiful brick red with black and white stripes. This, I know. It's this, and we have some beads coming up. You saw some, some more of the beads that yeah. I did some buying of trade beads the other day, which were pretty amazing. And so we have a classic coming up. Yeah, so these it's, come loose yeah. to us. They come right. like this, they and you'll get them in a the tube, um, and you'll have to string them. Mm -hmm. But I've got some, you know, you know me. You've, You've got some tips. I've got some tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. um, these green ones that are matte, actually have a yellow stripe yeah, the, and an the, aged Picasso the finish. A little bit, yeah. Ugh, they're beautiful. And even these, you guys, the the suppliers and stuff of these Czech beads, you need to remember that Czech seed beads are still made in fairly small factories. Mm -hmm. The quantities are always limited. The um, finishes sometimes vary from bead to bead. So, like, if you love this, which I do, this green mm -hmm. kind of tra green travertine. Green travertine, travertine yellow stripe. With the yeah. yellow stripe. Yep. If you love this, get it now, because the next batch that we get, 
may not be the same. May not be the same. So it's like yeah. in any craft, when you're buying your yarn, you want to buy fabric. the same dye lot. The yeah. fabric, you want to buy the same dye lot. It's the same, especially with seed beads. Also, bless you, Kara. <laughs> the same thing with our seed beads. The same thing with leather. Um, and that's just how it is. Yeah. So you just have yeah. to make those accommodations. That's okay. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's a little bit. It's sometimes a little bit frustrating if you're trying to match something that's mm -hmm. been broken or has. You know, even with the pearls and gemstones, they're going to vary a little bit, and that's sort of nature. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's just part of of the part we're yeah. going to have to accept a accept, little bit. Yeah. So. Well, before we get into this, mm -hmm. I want to give a couple shout of shout out, shout outs. Out. Everybody is saying hello. Um, Beth was in, but now she has to go out to physical therapy, so we'll see her later. We see people, some people are watching us from Southern California, Land, awesome. of, land of Fires oh, right now. So we're, we're thinking we're, we're about you guys. You. Um, we are just so stoked about everybody from all over. So thank you, thank you guys for for coming in, um, and there's a lot of love for your trade beads and your trade bead stories. Cool. Um, there was a remark, um, Anne said she can't help but notice how bare that pegboard is behind <laughs> us. And so we have a big Good order. Eye. Well, and we, you guys, thank you so much wow. for supporting our small business, uh, you know, over these holiday sales and things. We have a huge order coming in today, so our inventory team, poor Brand when I know in her head, she's like, <laughs> after I film this, I gotta get in there. Um, so Brandwin and Chris will be uh, restocking that soon. So, um, so we'll be getting that back out. So just as a reminder, and I need to say this at the beginning of the mm, broadcast right. rather than uh, 15 minutes in, but I did want to mention, if you guys are watching this later on a rebroadcast, and I know a lot of you do, you don't have a chance to watch it live, you can watch it on our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. you can watch it here on our Facebook page, it's archived, and you can also watch it on beadshop.com, our website, uh, on the Facebook Live uh, project page. Um, you can uh, watch those at any time, but if you want to kind of jump forward through the mm -hmm. chitty chat that we do at the beginning, Move your marker, your slider up about 15 minutes, and you'll see uh, the instruction begin at about the 15 minute mark. Sometimes we go long. Well, we're a little early well, today. Sometimes, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. And you can also uh, make sure uh, the middle of last year, Janice has started to write episode notes, which kind of encapsules each episode into some great cliff notes kind of things. Drea is starting to do those as well, and she's doing an amazing job. So if you haven't downloaded your episode notes or looked at those, mm. it's a great companion yes. um, for this. We kind of take, we look over the questions that you've had during the broadcast and things like that and try and address them there. So it's a great learning tool for these weekly broadcasts. And for this uh, for this particular project, I have, um, you have, a, some, extra I have learning. some extra notes, learning mm -hmm. notes, and then we're going to film another little segment to pop into this or put, put beside right. it. Well, we'll put it so right. We'll, we'll to load it up onto to yeah. YouTube. Emily did a really great kind of basic, um, really focusing on the chain stitch or the mm -hmm. the, the chain stitch, stitch the yeah. slip stitch of this. So, so we're going to do a lot of bells, bells and whistles here, but we'll follow it up. Uh, with that, and yeah. you also have um, some great tips on that little piece of paper I'm looking oh, at yeah. over there. Oh yeah, well, this I think we can add to the learning yeah, too. Yeah, we'll learn it. Add so it to the learning. this but. is um, I did some work over the last weekend, and I I really wanted to make sure that there were some kind of high points or mm -hmm. points tips, tips right. to think mm -hmm. about, um, and and really bead crochet if you have crocheted already. It takes a little focus to get started with. Mm -hmm. Once you're started, though, it's just lather, rinse, repeat. Mm -hmm. You just get to keep going and going and going. Right. Um, the patterning, which a lot of folks want to get into, too, is uh, based on six beads around. So here are some little samples of patterns, mm -hmm. and these are the directions to get those patterns mm -hmm. for your stringing. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So we'll include this in the episode notes. Mm -hmm. And what I'll do is um, Emily can forward this to me, and in our Facebook group, um, the yeah, Bead Shop, put it up there too. we'll put it there as well. Yeah, the Facebook, um, the Bead Table community. Um, we will uh, add it there as well for you guys. So let's start off, before you actually start doing the, sure. the, the stitch, Em, mm -hmm. I want to clarify some bead sizes because oh, I okay. think people have been asking about, well, what are these sizes? So I'm going to actually pull those up on our website. Okay. Um, but if you're having trouble working with these 11 knots that we're sure. going to work with today, you could start with like some. Do you Eights. have something that's in sixes? 
Uh, I don't have anything in a six. I do thought you? I had I had my six. Here it is. There you go. When I I've actually done this a while back. This is one that you gifted me mm -hmm. uh, a while back, which was so wonderful. <laughs> but these are in sixes. Mm -hmm. I made I must have made this. I don't know. So fifteen or twenty years we ago. We can put eights right beside, and elevens beside that. Mm -hmm. So you'll get an idea of what those look like in diameter. Okay. So if you are having trouble with the smaller beads, mm -hmm. pop yourself up to the bigger beads. That'll work yeah, as that's well. that's fine. So I do have a thought about um, thread that we're going to use today. And I do like the micro uh, Ceylon, or the, I'm sorry, the fine Ceylon. Mm -hmm. This is always going to trip me up. Um, I do like the fine Ceylon with our uh, new check beads. Mm -hmm. and, and really when you're picking a thread here, your beads should slide onto the thread easily, mm -hmm. but they shouldn't really flop around too much. Right. So if you're using eights or anything else, you might even do this mm -hmm. with check fire polish. You might do it with true twos. Right, like I did here. There's a whole bunch of other beads you could add to this. Mm -hmm. I might even go up to a regular Ceylon yeah. and to I help think, support it a little bit. And I think that's what I did with this one. This is one that I also made a billion years ago. Mm -hmm. And you can see it's got the three millimeter check glass it's got some eight mils, and then it's got some um, fire polish. The the yeah the three yeah. mil fire polish, and then the metal seed bead. Yeah, right. Which yeah. I love using in these. And this one I think was a one two three four a five mm -hmm. row mm -hmm. one. So yeah. what happens with more or less? And I mm -hmm. I typically do six. Mm -hmm. Is you may see more thread between the beads. Mm -hmm. Okay, because the circle's smaller. The circle's smaller, mm -hmm. and the more the thread begins to show a little mm -hmm. bit more. Really, on these, the thread is in the middle, mm -hmm. so the beads go around the outside of the mm -hmm. tube. So if you would and turn this tube. inside out, mm -hmm. you would just see the stitches. Right. Right on the right. outside. Right. Now the sizes. What we're calling these checks check here. These three. They're about equivalent to an A dot. Right. Though you can see if I hold this A dot up next no, to it. That, that's not in the shot. That's not in the oh, shot. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> if you see, there we go. Um, so the those. check beads, they're just, they're sized just a little differently. They're just yeah. different. And they're less, that less regularness to them too. Right. They're a little more, like you said, a little more like a donut. Or a bagel. Right, and a little, and less cut off than the yeah, Japanese beads. Yeah. So the effect is just a little different. Mm -hmm. So we know that some of you have been asking, well, what sizes are these? Mm -hmm. So the check on the strands, these guys are 11s. And then these other guys here that we've listed that you have, we've listed those as size 8s. Eight. Okay. So, uh, any other questions, Bran? How we did are we get doing? Somebody, mm -hmm. I may have picked this up a little bit later, but somebody was saying something about delicas, and Janice was saying it's a rounded bead. You probably wouldn't want to use delicas. You could well, use you delicas. Could. Yeah. Do you have anything that's a I, crocheted? I with don't a have anything. Here? What you're going to see with oh, delicas. No. Oh, was, but that was peyote. That's peyote. Yeah. With delicas, you're going to see that you're going to feel the edges of the beads more. Right. And because it's like a tube. It's a, it's a tube. tube. Yeah. A cut off tube. Mm -hmm. I don't. I feel like it's going to be a little less comfortable, and it's probably going to make, um, it's going to be very difficult to do it as a bangle, a mm -hmm. small bracelet. Mm -hmm. On a necklace, you could certainly do it because it's got enough room to kind of turn the curves, but I think on a bangle, you would be a little frustrated with mm -hmm. that. It would be really tight and stiff. Mm -hmm. So, And, uh, but you could, but you yeah. could use delicas. Yeah. You yeah. could. It'll just be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. People are saying that they can only do the eights or the sixes. They haven't gotten the hands of the elevens. Well, Nancy, the nice about this. <laughs> Nancy uh, Mckinsey says she was insane and tried 15 knots once. I've done 15 knots. You're and insane. It, it, You're it, insane. It actually does. It is painful. And Crazy. Yeah, it's no fun, really, and it, take, it took all the fun out of it. So <laughs> fifty knots know. are so <laughs> flipping small. Well, and of course, it checks. They're really more like a fourteen. Yeah, so they're, they're a little so bit bigger small. than the Japanese fifteens, but yeah, um, still not so comfortable, yeah. you know, to work with. Yeah, and so Terry, you were asking, are the beads all check? That's what we're going to be using mm -hmm. today. But you can use like yeah, these. You can absolutely these are use Japanese. Japanese. Yeah, these whatever. Are Japanese. And these are Japanese. Yeah. Um, no, those are check. Oh, they are check. Yeah, because oh. I like. Oh, right. Those I like check. These are Japanese. <laughs> so, um, so that's why. So we have a whole bunch of new of new ones in. Yeah. So yeah. they're there for your perusal. So you know. As far as transitioning from eights to elevens, mm -hmm. you can string eights and elevens together mm -hmm. and crochet right through the transition, and that will help you maybe. And that's this right, right. here. 
right? Yeah. So we've got 11s here, sandwiched between two mm -hmm. size eights. So let's jump in it. then. Okay. Oh, after Brandwin zooms. <laughs> and we'll All wait. Right. And so we'll wait. Gonna, uh, <laughs> we're gonna, so we're going to actually now reposition this camera. So mm -hmm. you guys are working from Emily's perspective. So Brandwin, why don't you to... pass me just that straight across and I will put it here for the moment. We'll position that camera up. And we're going to get you right into perspective here with Emily and get that position down. So bear with us here while we move that camera. And Brandwin? What? The, the papers up there, will you, yeah, will you just hand those over to me? That's perfect. And then, all right, so M, how's this perspective looking for everybody? I want to make sure that the camera isn't going to fall over. Let's see, Brand, if you can work with that guy. Yeah. And feel, go ahead and turn it back around if okay. you need to. Okay. And, Brandwin, is there a roll of tape behind you on the counter back there? I can grab Could one. Could you yeah, grab one for me? I'm sorry, I forgot. Okay. So, one of the first things that is probably good to remember about bead crochet is mm -hmm. we are going to load all the beads on the thread before we crochet. At the beginning. At the beginning. Okay. But I really recommend, thank you, I really recommend only doing about two to two and a half feet at a time. If you add more beads on, it's things just get too tangled up. So you start and stop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's really easy. So okay. you don't have to, so you would start with, and tell me that again, string I, how much at a time? I'd string about two or two and a half feet at a time. Feet, okay, got right. it. For every six inches of beads you string on, you'll get about an inch worth of bead crochet. So for every, tell me that one more time. For every six inches. Six inches of thread that are beads that you string. Mm -hmm, about an inch of You get work. an inch, okay. Okay. So since these are... I'm making myself some notes. <laughs> Since these are on a hank, I thought it'd be useful to show you how to transfer the beads from this thread, this hank thread, mm -hmm. um, to a spool of thread. Mm -hmm. So I pulled out carefully one strand from this hank, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to pull the hank and put it away. Now, the ever-present bit of tape that you might want, I'm going to tape one end so that the beads don't fall off. Mm -hmm. This is the fastest way to get your beads on your thread yeah, so that you can get I, going. I really like, uh, that's one of the things about those check seed beads that I like. Yes, I do too. Easy. So I've got my uh, fine seal on here and I'm going to put a, a collapsible eye needle on it. Mm -hmm. And it's just my whole spool, right? I'm not going to take my thread off the spool. Mm -hmm. And we're using micro seal on. <laughs> Right? Is no, that right? Fine. We're using fine sealon. Fine. Okay. Fine sealon. Fine sealon. <laughs> I right. keep getting mixed up. I'm yes. really sorry. Yes. Guys, it's me, fine. not you. Fine. So to do the transition, I'm going to hold the thread in my hand. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to poke it up some beads. Mm -hmm. Now, I am practiced at this, so I can go quite a ways. And that's maybe an inch or so of beads. And I'm just going to slide it down the needle and onto my new thread. And that little eye, the wire needle, that eye just collapses Absolutely. right down. Absolutely. And after, if you're using a fresh needle or a new needle, mm -hmm. that eye may be giving you a little bit of sass. But just pull, pull those beads over so those beads um, collapse that eye. And then you will have right no down. sass after that. That right. Your needle will be sass free. Right. So I'm just going to slide those beads down. And that transfer can go pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So on my project piece that I made today, I used just one strand from each of these hanks. Mm -hmm. And I got to right. tell you. Just one strand. Just one strand. And you can Check see. Check beads are very economical. So this length that mm -hmm. you're sitting right here, that's one strand. Yeah. Right? So there we go, transferring beads merrily along. Mm -hmm. And I would just transfer a whole strand at a time. Mm -hmm. And then I would transfer a second strand, mm -hmm. right? It's a little over three inches, about yeah, three inches. about three inches. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Huh? Mm -mm. So I'm going to put this guy aside because I want to also go over what it means to use the volcano mm -hmm. method. And so Trish just asked for a um, 
a clarification. Mm -hmm. Which is smaller, the micro Ceylon or the fine Ceylon? The, the micro, micro is, is, the small. is the smallest. So this is, we're kind of using the, the middle, medium. the medium, the middle of the road. I noticed on the Facebook group there were a few people that felt they couldn't volcano. Mm -hmm. They were having a hard time with my mm -hmm. scooping method. Mm -hmm. So beads that are loose, like these Czech beads or any Japanese beads, all come loose. Mm -hmm. If you just get yourself a pile. Your volcano wasn't big enough. Possibly. So that volcano we want is, um, can we see it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, the volcano we want has a little bit of a peak to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mountains are kind of flattened out. Volcano. We want that mm -hmm. volcano idea. Mm -hmm. And what I'll do is take my needle and thread and I'm just going to scoot through pretty much horizontally through that pile. Mm -hmm. If you want to add a little uplift at the end, sometimes that helps. Mm -hmm. But this means my beads come on to my thread pretty fast as well. Mm -hmm. And I actually I can close my eyes and do this without having even to look. But I do like to look at my beads before I scoot them onto the thread for any real skinnies or lumpy bumpy threads so beads. So you're, you're kind of going over the top of your volcano, mm, right? I'm going through maybe the top the third top of it. The top third, okay. Yeah. And then we've got a couple questions here. Sure. While you're volcanoing. Okay. Um, so Trish is saying that, yes, she thought that was the way the Ceylon went. So if she's using size dot beads, what thread should she use? She can still stick with the fine. With the fine? Yeah, she'll be okay. fine. Okay. You'll be, you'll fine do perfectly. Fine. So when would you, would you ever bump up to the regular? I would if I was using sixes. Six aughts. Yeah. Okay. And what's an equivalent in a tough, maybe... Um, well, maybe tough three. Okay, or tough two, because that kind of is yeah. in between, yeah. right? Yeah. So you could do tough as well, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about uh, um, uh, what's the difference in a collapsible needle and a size ten or twelve size uh, beading needles? So, so Terry, let's pull out. Let's give me those needles. Give me them needles, <laughs> or we can just show it like in your hand. There. Okay. So the the. Um, you know what? I don't, oh, maybe I do here, have. Do wait, have I have a beading needle. I, Hold I on. Yeah, right I got one right here. Um, a collapsible eye needle, or sometimes also known as a twisted wire needle, but on yes, on um, beadshop.com, a mm -hmm. twisted wire, a collapsible eye needle is fairly long and thin, and it has a pretty large eye. Mm -hmm. Since we're using fine thread, we would absolutely need to have that collapsible eye that's big enough to put the fine thread through. Right, and see that little circle? Can you guys see that? It's a little hard to see, but that's this little circle of wire. There. And when you go through, um, a, when the thread is in there, it's easy to thread. Mm -hmm. And then going through the eye, it collapses a little mm -hmm. bit. See how it's a little down. smaller? Mm -hmm. But a seed bead needle or a size 10 or 12 needle. Right here. I have, and I have one that's um, On threaded thread. right here too. This is a rigid needle, mm -hmm. right? And the eye is quite small. You never would be able to get a crocheting thread through there. No, it'd be real small. Right. So this, when we do our seed bead work, when we do our peyote stitch, mm -hmm. when we do all that, that's when you use this guy here. Correct. Right? Yep. And notice how on these seed bead needles, the eye of the needle isn't wide, that the needle right. is all one. That one dia same diameter, yeah, same diameter. Yeah, same diameter all the way around. So that's why sometimes if you are trying to bead with like a sewing needle, the eye of the sewing needle is bulged out a little bit, Quite which bit. is why yeah. it doesn't really work with um, with the seed beads if right. the needle would fit down here but not up by the eye. Okay, so hopefully that clarifies things a bit. I use the the uh, twisted wire needle or the collapsible eye needle all the time. Mm -hmm. And I don't even throw it away at the end. I reuse it by opening mm -hmm. up the eye again with my mm -hmm. awl mm -hmm. so that I can use it, reuse it again and again. Mm -hmm. And at some point it gets pretty wrinkly and bent up and not so attractive and then I will mm -hmm. retire and these, it. And just for a point of clarification, mm -hmm. on the website on beadshop.com we call these the flexible eye because the eye flexes down and our uh, collapsible eye needles are our thicker. And they're the ones that grip the thread. That grip the and thread. And they'd be great with the big seal mm -hmm, on. With and the, the big seal And the mm -hmm. eight needles, or mm -hmm. eight be uh, size, uh, size six beads. Size six beads. Yeah. They but just this perfect. one in particular is the flexible eye because that eye flexes down. Right. I always get that confused. Yeah. Me and you both. Well, I just wanted to clarify. A little Thanks. bit of clarification. Thanks. 
All right, let's scoop up those beads and get them out of the road for the moment. Okay. So you have a little, kind of a little yeah, setup. Yeah, I have a little beginning. sample. Yeah, and it's how you start to teach mm -hmm. with your, uh, with your ladies uh, and gentlemen mm -hmm. uh, in class. Right. So I'm going to use um, a small sampler to kind of get you started. And you know, you can actually do this with your own beads if you like. Mm -hmm. um, I actually did it on, on the, the beginning of this one. I was so excited about getting these beads that I was like, oh my God, I can't, I just got to put some on the thread and get going. Right. Um, and to see how they looked. And so I strung on three sequences mm -hmm. of the same pattern of beads. And you can see right here, this is where I began this particular rope. Right. And these are just size eight beads on a contrasting thread color so we can really see what the difference is mm -hmm. and how they look different. So three little groupings are these guys here and they're grouped in little colors. So I can see each first through sixth stitch each time okay. and they're gonna line up really easily. Because this is, as I say, let's say it again, it is a six Bead around. beads around um, stitch, right. or six rope. beads around rope, yeah. So, Em, let's move yourself. This yeah. is a really, this is probably oh, where you want to okay. be working. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. perfect. So, <clears throat> I'm going to start this crochet the same way I started the bits and pieces crochet, with a slip knot, mm -hmm. and I'm going to wind it around my fingers, and instead of sticking the end through, I'm going to actually pull up a little loop of thread. Okay. And I'm going to do that again to show you what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Basically, this is a slip knot, mm -hmm. right? See how it undoes itself real easily? Wrap it right around and pull up a little loop of thread. That little slip knot is the very first loop that you're going to work with. Mm -hmm. And this is also reminiscent when you did the beads and pieces crochet. Bits and pieces, same, same. It starts the same. same and so same. what size crochet hook um, are you using there for that? I've got a number eight okay. crochet hook, and that's a 0.9 millimeter crochet hook. I'm gonna flash, am, I in the, am I in the shot? Yep. Eight. Yep, there we go. Great. Okay. So I like these clover hooks the best. Um, they, are, to me, are the most comfortable of all the mm -hmm. hooks, and I've bought cheaper ones and more expensive ones, and they are, this is the most comfortable. I left about um, a six or eight inch tail of thread, mm -hmm. and this is how I would stop and start any of my crochet pieces to mm -hmm. get myself enough to join it to something else or to join it to more beads. Right, because right? if you don't have that long tail, it's impossible to join. It's super frustrating, right? yeah. yeah. So give yourself plenty of thread. Yeah. Now, Em, did you say what thread you're working on here? This is actually a little bit of pearl cotton. Okay. And I like the flexibility of pearl cotton, but it's not as durable okay. as the nylons are. Mm -hmm. And I'm really happy to change over now to nylon and mm -hmm. get to something a little stronger. Mm -hmm. But we use something a little bit thicker so it would be easier mm -hmm. to see on yeah, the camera. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and a much brighter contrasting mm -hmm. color. You know, if you love black thread and black beads, I, I understand you. <laughs> I do too. But don't try it on this first one. It no, will make yourself God, crazy. No. Yes. Right? Do don't don't do it. No. I mean you can, but don't think of me no. while you're doing it then. No. Right? So I'm gonna start by chain or slip stitching my first six beads. Okay. And this is how same kind of stitch we did with beads and pieces. I'm gonna store my beads on my forefinger, right? And notice that I have kind of a small amount of thread here visible. I really like to have my hands and fingers and beads pretty close together. Mm -hmm. I find that it does help me with keeping a better consistent tension. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring one bead down, yarn over, and pull my hook through the stitch. Bring a bead down, yarn over, and pull my hook through the stitch. I get to do this six times. So it's easy and repetitive, right? It's just like beads and pieces. Yarn over and pull through. One of the things about crocheting is it, the hook has a lot of a lot of a job to do. It goes around the thread, and as you turn it, it holds on to the thread. And as you're going through the loop, as the hook is down, it doesn't catch on that hook. So that I loop. see. So the way it's because I actually crochet a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So when you're grabbing that thread, you're mm -hmm. bringing, you, you bring the bead down, you're grabbing the thread, you grab the thread with the hook, but then as you pull it through, the hook 
turns. The face is down Correct. towards the table, right? Right. So the hook starts this way. Mm -hmm. You grab the thread with it, and then as you pull down, you want the hook to be pointing away, the open of the hook to be mm -hmm. pointing away from the thread. Otherwise, it'll be very difficult to pull the thread through, mm -hmm. right? I was pulled in so tight on your hand that I don't think they saw how you were doing the little hook. Oh, you okay. You might want to You want me to do that again? again? Yeah. Did you pull back a little bit? Yeah. So if this is the hook, <laughs> I know it's a funny looking hook, um, I turn the hook to grab the thread yarning over, and then I turn my hook down. So as I pull through the loop, the hook doesn't get caught in the loop itself, mm -hmm. okay? If you pull through with the hook up, it may catch on the thread. I think Kate's technique is that she tends to work a little bit more vertically than horizontally. And she's still probably doing the same thing, but it again, mm -hmm. it's one of those things when you're teaching it, you get really, you pick up on the minutia of this technique. It's just, it's kind of amazing. So here's my last bead. It's a green one. I'm gonna yarn green over one. and pull through. Okay? So there's my chain of six beads. And they look fine. There's some little irregularities in their sizes, but that's cool. I'm going to turn this into a loop now by f bending this around. Bend. And I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to go under that orange bead. So what I want to do is aim for the bottom outside of the bead, pushing under, and catching just the thread that's in the bead. I don't really need those other threads down there. I just need that one little thread in the, in the bead. There he is. Okay, so now I have two loops of thread on my bead, on my hook. Okay, can you see that? And, and that two loops is pretty, yeah. pretty important. Now this is another place that I've developed a, a unique technique for all of you new crocheters. When I work with students one-to-one -one, um, or in person, this is a place where the, the core of this little tube collapses, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to see what's happening in mm -hmm. there. And so what I did was I s figured it out to have something that I could stick down in the middle. To support it. To support it. And it could be a little piece of a drink straw, right? So these are like a little cocktail straw. You could use a chopstick if, or a, um, uh, a, a, a toothpick pick. if you're having something smaller. Toothpicks are kind of handy because they're a little bit sticky. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit rough on the outside and they hang on to the thread. But having that little bit of a of, of something down the middle kind of makes it a little easier to hang on mm -hmm. to this thread mm -hmm. and tube while you're working with it at first. Mm -hmm. And I only use that little crutch until I am in the um, first inch or so. Mm -hmm. Once I've got that first inch or so down, I take the tube out and it's and, done. And I'm going to have you, sure. this hand, when Brandwin's in nice and tight, which is great, okay. sometimes this hand is blocking, so if okay. you could, from here, Maybe to here if you could. Like that? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. I think better? that's a little better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I need some more beads because I used up all that six for six beads. Mm -hmm. I'm going to slide some more down. And again, I'm going to store them on top of my forefinger so that I can grab them with my other fingernail. So, I have those two loops of thread on the hook. And I'm going to bring down my next bead. And I went under an orange bead, so I know I should be using an orange bead next. I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook, and pull through both loops. Sometimes you have to pull through them separately, but that's okay. One at a time or two at a time, either way. I'm going to go through the next one, pull through, pull down a bead, yarn over, pull through. So, Em, you are, just to clarify, you are right-handed. I am. And you are holding the hook in your Oops. right hand. I am. Hand, That's okay. correct. My non-dominant hand is holding the beads mm -hmm. and the thread. Fairly taut. I was going to say, do you have anything to say about tension? Yeah, I always have something to say about tension. Fairly taut. And, again, I find it being a little closer to my work with my thread, in other words, this distance right here is pretty small, mm -hmm. that seems to help me quite a bit. So Pull this through. first, when you go from that that first orange bead, mm -hmm. where should your bead? 
Your bead should nestle in between the two threads that are on your hook. And I'm holding that right now on the screen so you can kind of see. So the bead really is going to sit right in between those two loops of thread. I'm going to yarn over and pull through. Okay, okay, so I've got this here. Get to my green I go through, bead. I pull this down. And your first You guys row, can't hear this, but Kate's talking to herself in I the am. background. I am. It's great. And your first row, I think, mm -hmm. uh, is going to look a little, might look a little funny. It will. And it may look a little funny till you get the second or third row down. And there's mm -hmm. something noticeable that I'll show you here in a second. I'm coming up on my um, orange bead again. This is my... Uh, first bead, so I'm moving on to row three. Okay, and okay. what's your, and also you probably have a mantra for this one, right? You know, really what I want to focus on is getting the bead flipped. Right. That was the step that made this all make sense for me. Mm -hmm. Getting that bead flipped to the outside of the hook, that, be, that direction being the outside, um, made a big difference for me. Is that what Tanya means by maybe mention pushing the bead to the right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Is that Tanya Skivas miracle? It's Tanya Lockridge. Uh -huh. okay. Tanya Lockridge. Tanya, yes, it's exactly what I mean. Flipping it to the right. So this is my right side over here where my forefinger is. So I'm flipping it out to the right. I'm going to pull down that bead, yarn over, pull through. And then Manny says, so you go under the bead from the previous row, grabbing only the thread, and then drop the bead, and then pull the thread through both loops. Correct, That's Mamie. Correct. You are absolutely right. That's right. So for me, the flip was the key. Mm -hmm. And I look back on some of my earlier samples of bead crochet. You remember my jar of beads that I brought, my mm -hmm. samples? They're, my first one's in there. It's hideous. I mean, there's beads hanging out, there's loops of thread, there's all kinds of weird things going on. I go along fine, and then something goes kaflooey. So this flip made it all worthwhile for me. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I've got two threads on the hook. I'm going to bring down a new bead, yarn over, pull through. So this is the part I'm going to make you a little movie for, so that you can watch just this part. Mm -hmm. And I might I might do it without the straw. Some people get f really frustrated and focused on that straw. But let me show you what a difference it makes after the first couple rows. All right. Here's my I'm coming up on that green bead. That's the last one of my first three rows. I had strung on 18 beads in sequence. You said to show the flip slowly. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got more beads. Don't worry. I can do <laughs> some more. So here's the... Here's my rose. You can see it's a spiral, right? And what's good to notice about this is my first row, second row, third row. So first row is looking a little saggy because there's nothing below it. But this second row, do you notice how the bead holes are now vertical, right? There it is, the bead hole right mm -hmm. there. And the row above it, the row that I'm still working with, row three, which row four would be attached to, mm -hmm. the bead holes are horizontal. Mm -hmm. So every time you flip, what you're doing is turning that hole upright. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let me bring in some other beads. Now I'm going to not have different colors. So let's let's talk about um, uh, here, um, there's three questions. Sure. Uh, we want to slow down the flip so we can see where the flip is. Okay. And I think uh, what Terry is asking, what hole are you going through to make the next rows? And it's not really the, the hole, it's the... I'm going under the bead. Yeah. Let me show you all that again. Mm -hmm. So I've got some new color of beads, and now you don't get to follow the colors. It's just all one color. Okay. So I have my hook. This is the beginning of row four. I'm pushing underneath that bead. Straw's almost blocking the Yeah, table. so okay. I think maybe we should take the straw. All right, yeah. straw's done. Yeah, goodbye straw. Goodbye straw. There we go. So I'm forcing my hook under the bead, and I'm flipping it to the right or to the outside. See how I now have two threads on my hook? I'm going to bring a bead down right in that little spot, and I want to hold it in place. It's just nestled right in between those two loops. I'm going to hold it there, yarn over, and come through. I'm going to go under the yellow bead, push under the bead, and, and it most often flips over to the left, so I have to flip it to the right. 
pull down a bead, hold it in place, yarn over, pull through. Here's white bead, ivory bead. Under the bead, flip it, pull down a bead, yarn over, pull through. Under the bead, flip it, pull down a bead, yarn over, pull through. Oops. So if you come out of your loop, do your best to get back in the original one. If you have to, if you end up pulling too hard, you'll undo all your hard efforts. So under the bead, I'm repeating the mantra in my head. Mm -hmm. Under the bead. Oops. That just needs to do it. Flip there. the bead. Pull the bead down. Make the stitch. Yarn over. Pull through. So M, I think also we might want to see. Yeah, what Gita is saying, when you say under the bead, Emily, mm -hmm. do you actually go under the thread between the beads? I'm going under the bead, which then makes the bead the loop that is holding the thread. And so normally in crochet, and let me, let me uh, clarify that even one more step, okay? Give me one moment and let me just prep a little something here, guys. Lucky I have lots and lots of thread floating all around because, boy, it can get confusing. Okay. Nanny says, if I'm right, you are basically clearing out the previous row bead to the right to see the two loops on the hook clearly. That's right. Correct. But I'm also Manny. M Manny? M Manny. Manny. Not only am I doing that, but I'm turning the whole of the bead upright. So when I crochet, let's just pretend I'm doing yarn or something else. I crochet, pulling a little thread loop through a thread loop. Is that good? Okay. So this is just the crochet without the beads. And when I go into it to make a circle, I'm going to go through a thre thread loop. Now normally, there would be a bead hanging out on that loop, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm going under the bead to get into the loop. Gita, that might make more sense. Mm -hmm. I would yarn over and pull through. So when you yarn over, Ginger asks, does the thread go between the new bead and the other bead? The thread go between the new bead and the other bead. It, your thread goes through. I'm doing it right here. I know, I'm going to do it right now, too. <laughs> Good one, Ginger. <laughs> so, here's my two threads. I'm under the green bead, and I have the thread coming. This is going to my spool of thread with beads on it. I'm going to bring the bead down, yarn over, and pull through. It's kind of on the outside. Yeah, it's on the outside of oh, the, new, the new, bead. new bead. Yeah. So under the bead, flip, pull down a bead, yarn over, pull through. Under the bead, flip, bring a bead down, yarn over, pull through. And Cindy wants to know, is the next bead intuitive? It is a little bit. Cindy, I find that <clears throat> what I what I want to look at periodically as I'm working is that there's six beads on my active row. So my upright row has six beads on it. And sometimes when I'm talking and things are going on and I'm crocheting away in a group, I will just simply divide the beads in half with my hook to make sure oh, there's that, three and three. Really, that's a really good way of doing it. Because it's easier to do yeah. when, to count those smaller numbers. Yeah. You know, and you can do it any way you like, three and yeah. three, okay? Sometimes if you have a pattern, it's, it's easy because you have two white and four black, and so it's easy to count. Um, what is happening as a righty is the next bead I'm going to go to is this bead on the left, mm -hmm. okay? So I've just completed this one, so I can't go back this direction. 
I need to go to that next beat on the left. Mm -hmm. So my tube itself is turning clockwise to the right, and the spiral is actually going to the left. Sorry about that. So, <laughs> but my tube generally mm -hmm. just turns up a, a, a minute turn every stitch to the to the right clockwise. Okay. More questions, Brandwin? We're, we're getting people are saying it's starting to make. Nancy says it's starting yeah, to make yeah. sense. Okay. Gita seems to be uh, okay. If you have a basis of crochet in your life already, this won't feel so awkward. If you don't have a basis for crochet, I would do the bits and pieces technique. So you've done a bit of this holding beads and holding threads and hook using your hook. Um, I might also encourage you to go down and make friends with the ladies at the local yarn store if you have one, or call your mom or your auntie or your grandma, if you've got a grandma around, who knows how to crochet, or your neighbor or whomever, and have them give you a little refresher. Simple beads or, or no beads, just yarn and a hook um, are pretty inexpensive to come by and they can be used for practicing. So when we do our little video for you to watch later, I'll do less talking and more just doing. So you can kind of watch it over and over again. So I think, so my uh, mind kind of looks like, as we like to say, the dog's breakfast. <laughs> but Emily, will you show, so mm -hmm. we put our bead, so we put our needle in the loop. Mm-hmm. Loop in the loop. We flipped our bead. Mm-hmm. We're bringing down our bead. Mm-hmm. Now when we bring down that bead, where does that bead sit? It. I like to say that it nestles in between the two loops. So the two loops meaning the two loops on of my the hook. bead that you just flipped? The, yes. One of those is that one. And the one that you, the loop, the bead the, that you just put on? No. Or the bead that you just finished with? Yes. Right. So it, so my bead is So here. I have this first loop is uh -huh. the loop that I would be crocheting along uh -huh. with. This loop comes from that bead that I slid down mm -hmm. and flipped over. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yarn over pull through. So the, uh, the beads really should be underneath my hook, right? Kind of. Yeah, underneath. I mean, my, um, my active bead, my n next to be crocheted in bead, is usually at parallel or slightly above my hook, mm -hmm. just as my hook goes in. Okay. So when it comes time to take a break, you don't want to let the loops get away from you These that you're making with crochet. Mm -hmm. Knitting, you know, you your loops are all on a needle. And with crochet, you have a, run a little bit of a risk of having this thing come undone, mm -hmm. right? So what I like to use is a safety pin, any safety pin that you have. That will help hold that loop open. And you can just clip it in there and then that keeps the loop from getting lost, mm -hmm. right? You never have to worry. So here's my bead crochet so far. That's okay. impressive. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about um, what happens when you want to join. You've run out of beads. You've mm -hmm. crocheted all the beads up, and you would like to um, move on and add more beads and start the next color. Um, I do mine, typically, I string up about um, two strands of African beads. Mm -hmm. So I have a few, f a feet, a foot, <laughs> I'm sorry. Easy for you to say. I have a couple of feet at a time. So if you were to look at this section, um, this would have been two strung together, two strung together, two strung together. What's kind of mind-blowing is that when you put your beads on the string, uh, to crochet them, the last bead that you put on goes on fir goes first. Okay. Okay. So I have pre-strung some beads here onto some thread, and I wound them around the bobbin. And this bobbin's a little bit small, but that's okay. A smaller or medium bobbin is, will do you just right. Um, I'm going to unwind the thread and the beads from this bobbin. So when I pre-strung these beads on. I strung them on. First ones that went on were the red ones. 
and the second ones that went on were the blue ones. So first strung, last to go. Last strung, first to go. Okay? And here's my piece that I'm working on. And this is how I normally do my work. This isn't any different mm -hmm. than I would do for you. This is, I show you exactly what I normally do. Okay? And I'm going to tie these two threads together. So I have my thread to my work. It's got a safety pin in it. You can get real fancy like I like to find old vintage safety right, pins. Right, I like that one. Right. And I'm going to take both strands, make an overhand knot, and pull my thread through. And can I borrow that all off of you, Katie? Give me that all. Give me that all. Give me your all. I'm going to slip my all in the knot. Remember how pearl knotting, how we did in pearl knotting? I'm going to slide it right down, right to my work, okay? And then I'm going to take my awl out. So my knot, two threads are now knotted together. Not a problem. I've got a fairly long extra tail, so I'm going to use my thread snips to get rid of some of that. Mm -hmm. And then I actually will let my thread just go right down the inside of the tube for an inch or so. Now, because I have a knot here, I can't get a bigger loop pulled from my safety pin. So that's all right. That's exactly the loop size I need. Okay? I'm going to slide my safety pin out, pick up my hook, slide it in the loop, and now I'm ready to continue on. And I will pull these this knotted end just inside. So it's going to run inside the tube for about an inch or so. And then when I get tired of fussing with it, it's done. I just clip off the extra. And I don't have to worry about gluing it or doing anything fancy to it. Mm -hmm. okay? It'll be just fine. So let's do a, a row or so on this one. Okay. Okay. And I like crochet because, bead crochet, because I can carry it along with me. The beads are already strung on the thread. I don't have to worry about having a little tray or a pat, pad or anything to do these with. They just are already strung and I can take them with me anywhere. Okay, So I'm going to go under that little striped green bead, flip it, pull down a blue bead, yarn over, pull through, go to the next one, under that gr little green stripey bead, pull down a blue bead, flip it, yarn over, pull through. So that little flip for me was everything. That made everything I was doing consistent and happen the right way. If I didn't do that flip every time, I would not be doing this today. Thank goodness for the flip. Okay. And I have a tendency when I knit and I crochet um, mm -hmm. to be kind of tight. I do too. You know, um, really... But I don't know if it's... You want to really strike the right balance, I think. Here. Yeah, I think being more consistent is more important. Loose crocheting will give you beads that will flip around in those loops and not really do what you want them, not behave the way you would like them to behave. Mm -hmm. Sneak under that bead, flip it. So how many beads in each color do you string at a time for each color? I like to string about a strand. Really difficult to measure. Um, when we do the, the loose beads um, that are not on a strand, not on a hank, you can string as many or few as you like. But again, I like that little bit of irregularity. And this is not, of course, everyone's cup of tea, but it is definitely my cup of tea. So, um, let me ask you. It seems yes, like Katie. I have run into an issue mm. that I've gone all the way around, and where I once had six beads, now I have five. Inadvertent decrease. Yes. <laughs> it's an inadvertent decrease. Okay. So... What should I do? Um, pull your pull your thread out. Die. Well, I'm okay. sorry to say, but that's really the only way to do okay. it. Okay. Okay. So if I so can you show pulling out thread and sure. how to find that loop? Mm-hmm. And you could show it on my mess of a thing if you want. Do you want, want me it. to show it on yours, or do you want me well, to show it on another one? I don't know. I'm gonna try, <laughs> I'm gonna try and fix this. Okay. Oh, You're so I brave. See. No, I see what it was. I'll see. I completely skipped. Skipped. I'll pass this over okay. to you. Yeah. 
I completely skipped that sad little gray bead right there. I can see that. So I did not go into the hole in that gray or into mm -hmm. the loop into that. That gray was bead. your decrease there. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was my decrease. So you can decrease and increase. You can actually okay. add two beads in a stitch if you want. But now, so uh, this is where I feel like if I lose my loop, like it's like game over, kids. No. I will never be able to fix that. No. So. It's not true. So you're getting the all and pulling that loop nice and up. There we go. There it is. Okay. Whoops, sorry. I'm leaning. Sorry, I'm leaning into the camera and I'm not paying any attention. So, so no, so no big deal. I didn't forget to add a bead. I just skipped went, a loop. I just went over. Yeah. Yeah. She just skipped a loop. It's okay. Yeah. It's all it's all fixable. And I knew that because when I got to the end where I knew I was going to start my new row, mm -hmm. I only had five beads. Yeah. So yeah. periodic counting at the top mm -hmm. is, is really, it's such a quick thing mm -hmm. to do. I don't think I would do it on every row because mm -mm. that would slow you down. But, well, you know, every now and again, yeah. you could just, and you don't have to stop, uh, you don't have to do it at the beginning or ending mm -hmm. of a row. And what I would recommend for people is um, maybe three striped rows may not be enough. Yeah, I mean, you could do as many as you feel mm -hmm. comfortable with. And yeah. if you're just sort of starting out to learn, um, th the stripe row is, you can do two of each color if you want. You don't have mm -hmm. to do one, one, one. That takes a long time to string. Um, mm -hmm. But if you want to do two blue, two white, two red, two ri blue, two red, two white, right. that's fine. You can do pairs, too. Sometimes that will speed things along mm -hmm. for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I use the bobbin to store my beads on um, when I'm traveling. And um, put that bobbin, the spool of thread, my beads in a Ziploc bag, and I'm kind of good to go. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a and, and a hook, of course. Mm -hmm. I always have two hooks in case I lose one or I find someone I have to show how to do it right right away. Right, right away, like me. Right, right away, like Kate. I think I did give you stuff the first time. You did. <laughs> the first time you're all here, you go. <laughs> or we went to the, somewhere to get one. Right, get right, things right away, right away, right away. So the last thing we really have to talk about is joining these guys together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have taught this class as a bangle class, and I've taught it as a necklace class. And there's a couple of things you could do um, for your piece. Here's a, a sample, for instance, made with Japanese size 8 beads interspersed with a few um, Swarovski crystals for a little bit of sparkle. And I finished it off with a cone and a clasp. Okay. And this is kind of a traditional use of a cone, bringing something wide and making it narrower to get it to the smaller part of the clasp. So that's a really common way one could do this. When you get to the end of your rope, you'll want to do a slip stitch row all the way around. So let me show you what that looks like. Here's my, here's my little sample that I was working on, on, a sa on my little lucky safety pin. So I'll take that out. And I'm going to just finish off this last row. So it doesn't really matter if you're at the beginning or the end of a row itself. You're just going to finish it off right where you're at. Okay? I'm so gonna, anywhere in that circle. Anywhere in doesn't that circle. Matter. Doesn't matter. I'm going to go right under that last bead, flip it, yarn over, and pull through. Whoops. Yarn over, pull through both loops. Oh my goodness, I did it again. Do I have the right hook? I do. Okay. I was having that trouble, actually. I don't know why I was, having, I was not having trouble before. No, just till you came over here and I talked know. to me. I'm screwing you up. You did. So I'm yarning over without adding a bead. I'm still doing the flip, mm -hmm. but I'm not adding a bead here. Okay? So you're kind of making a little... Paper, right? Mm-hmm. I'm actually just flattening the row, that last okay. row, and flipping all the last beads. Okay. Okay. So that they're all facing up. Right. Can you see how it's all kind of ended off there? And with crochet, all you need to do is pull out a big loop of thread and pull it through, and you're done. There's the end. So I don't do this every time I change threads and beads. But I do this when I get to the end. Okay? So there's the end of that little stub. Here's the end of my necklace. 
I want to stitch those two ends to one another. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so let's take a look at how those both of those ends, how they look mm -hmm. face up. So this is truly a spiral, okay? It's not an even, perfectly even flat top. There's one bead that's a little lower. So that makes us, gives us six, because that's the row previous. Mm -hmm. And then five more kind of coming along up the top. And six on this one as well. Mm -hmm. And so the one that you started with, Em, mm -hmm. it's going to look a little different, right? Well, is it? No. Your start? No. No. It looks the same? It looks okay. the same. Okay. okay. And then the question here was, can you decrease the bead count to taper the end of the bracelet or necklace? You can. I don't think it's necessary. Okay. Okay. Um, it fits into a cone pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me just talk just briefly with a little paper and pen here about what's going to happen. We have two ends. We have our beginning end of our rope. I'm making it much harder on myself, aren't I? It has a thread coming off of it. And we have our finished end with a thread coming off. And each of these have the same spiral. And as they go around, you're going to find that there is um, a little bit of a bead that's a little taller and a little lower and a little lower, and it goes right around. On the other side, you'll have taller bead, lower, a little lower, a little lower. Okay? So what I'm going to do with these two threads is actually use them to marry the ends together. And I'll take each thread one at a time and bring it across, and I'm going to fit together these two spirals so they match up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to then use my these threads to go under each bead and go looping back and forth. So this is a little bit like the zipper that we did with um, Peyote Stitch, mm -hmm. and each one is going to loop back and forth. And I want to make sure that I don't pull these ends together too tightly at first. Mm -hmm. I might do three or four stitches here before I actually marry the two together, before I bring so them to touch. you can see your thread path. Right? And I'll, I've also found that if you pull them together too tightly at first, mm -hmm. you tend to make a little bit of a waist line there. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. visible forevermore. And you can and never you get rid of it. Pull it in, you pull it in too tightly, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to use one thread to go all around and pull them in together. And when I finish with that thread, I'm going to bring it up into the beadwork, not through the beads, through the threads in the middle, and I'll tie a little half hitch and go through a couple of beads, maybe two or three times, and do that little half hitch. And I'm going to use that as an anchor to help pull those two ends together. Then I'll go to the other side and grab that thread and stitch up into the beadwork a little half hitch, go over here a little half hitch, maybe I'll do that three times and pull it out. And then I can cut off my threads, and I'm all done. Okay? When you first do this, I really recommend you doing it on a necklace first. If you do it on a bracelet, it's a little harder to get that join up smoothly and be really, really tidy looking. Mm -hmm. um, I do have fixes for that, which we'll go into on another day, but I'm basically going to follow the same little pattern right now. And I like a tapestry needle. Um, we have tapestry needles now. I highly recommend that you get a pack of them. And you know, we were talking about needles the other day. I do not fool around with four packs of needles. <laughs> I buy 25 you're all packs. In. Yep, you're I'm all, all in. in. Mm -hmm. I do not fool around with 10 packs, four packs, anything. I buy a 25 pack. If I run out of needles and the zombie apocalypse comes, I am going to be mm -hmm. really you're upset. Ready. Right. Right? Because then I'm going to have to find a bead store and break into it and find some needles. <laughs> so it's just not going to happen. <laughs> and, you know, if I'm evacuated and I have some beadwork I'm going to do in my evacuation center. I'm going to have needles. All right. Well, <laughs> I've thought this out. I can I can really tell you how. Okay. Yes. So, I do not I do not fool around with small packs of needles anymore. No, don't I do just it. find it to be silly and um, I just buy the big pack. It's and you know what? It's it's a little bit of a money saving as well. So, these tapestry needles have a rounded point. They have a pretty good sized eye, so easy enough for me to slip my Ceylon fine through the eye. And I'm going to use my same threading technique that I do before, except I have to get it at focal length. I think I have to go get my 
eyes checked, golly. All right, get my needle right on my thread. So I want to line these guys up. And it's really easy to see on this one because it's big. Can you see how that's a little uneven? This other side is actually uneven too. And they're actually just going to marry right up. Okay? If you want to be sneaky about this, have a few bigger beads at the other end. Because no one will ever be able to tell. Because look, there's bigger beads elsewhere in your piece. And they just match right up. So I'm right. going to take my thread and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to catch the thread that's coming through the beads. So this is just the same as I would do if I was crocheting. Okay, I'm right underneath that thread, that loop of bead, loop of thread in the bead. And I'm going to go back now to my other side. Pick up that thread. And again, I'm not going to pull this together quite yet. I'm going to keep it a little bit loose. So you'll actually be able to see the, the how the threads look when you do this. And I'm going to continue to turn my piece as I go from side to side. So I don't want to tangle up these threads. I want to keep them straight, one between the other. It's kind of like you're... Um it's like you're mending two pieces yeah, of cloth together. together. Mm hmm Very like. Yeah, and you don't want to twist those little bars, right? No. No. And if something's going on, I've got some other weird bit of thread here. Ugh, I see what I did. I'm going to unthread my needle because I split my thread. And I that don't want to do that. That is always a hazard. No matter what you're doing, mm -mm. splitting your thread is no bueno as Kate Richburg likes mm -hmm. to say. That's right, no bueno. No bueno. wonder what else they do in Finland for their anniversary, their, their centennial. I don't know, Suzanne, you're going to have to get back to us. Yeah, I I'm super know. curious. You know, we kind of have typical things that we do here, but I don't know if they have the same sort of uh, stuff. You know, I think my issue, and you know, I'd be crocheted. <laughs> for a while. <laughs> I just haven't picked this up in so long. Uh -huh. I think I am just, I I have a death grip on this needle and on this thread. I mm -hmm. think I am pulling my things. Too tightly? Is it really hard to get way. under the beads? Yeah. That's part of it. Just yeah. way too tight. So ease up, you guys. Don't do what I do. Lighten up? Oh, that's Lighten hard for us to up. say. Me and Kate, we're... Tightly wound. Right. Let me tell you but what. Who's, who's tightly? Who are you calling tightly wound, Emily Miller? You are. <laughs> Come on now. I know you are, and you know you are. Let's just be, let's right. be honest. Let's who's be up honest. in the first thing in the morning looking at her emails? Well, Watch whatever. Her. Whatever. We let's do see. have a question from yeah. Terry about sure. how do you know which bead to to go under first when mending? So I'm just following the path. Um, from side to side. So on one side, my last bead, this tallest bead. On the other side, it's going to be the lowest bead because they're going to match up, sort of like link, little, locked together. Right, little stair steps mm -hmm. or whatever. So here's my mending. Can you see it going side to side? Yeah. I'm going to actually pull this now so that it all comes together. Okay. And I have like one more stitch to take here because I didn't quite get that last one in there. I couldn't quite see where I was at. So here we go. That's my last one. Getting right under that lowest bead because that was my last one. I was on the highest bead before. Okay. So I happen to know that this thread that I'm working with came from this side where the blue beads are. I'm going to carry it over to the opposite side and I'm going to use this as a little bit of a help to join this up. This thread that comes from the brown side is going to go over into the blue side and that's also. So these threads are going to overlap and be pulling against each other to help hold this all together. So when I go up into the beadwork here, I'm not going through beads. I'm just going through, through, your through the thread. Hmm. Yep kind of poking my way around up in there, looking for an outlet. Hello, let me out. And, and it's nice, these these tapestry needles are, are not so 
sharp that they have a tendency to split thread too easily. Mm -hmm. They're a little on the blunt side compared to a beading needle. So now I'm just going to catch the thread in the beads. I'll hold still for just a second. Can you see in there where I've got my needle through the thread in the beads? I'm going to pull through and get my needle through that loop, pull up a knot, and it just disappears in there. And then I'm just going to kind of pop over here. That is so impressive, Emily. What do you mean? Well, it's impressive. No, no, no. Pshaw. Well, good, good work. All right. Got some threads down there. Pull through, through the loop. And is it more noticeable if the beads are the same size? You want to aim for it to be not so noticeable. So if you're going to begin and end with the same size beads, if you've got that much of a plan, which i got to say I, don't, I almost never do, um, <clears throat> you want to make sure that when you, when you mend this together, you don't pull too tightly initially. It will give you a waste in the beads. You'll have a tight, tighter uh, linked tighter area. Band, mm -hmm. yeah. And that'll right. just look like a little cinched in part, right? right. But two different sizes. It's I took a advantage of to my um, a little bit easier to hide it. I took advantage of my availability of different size beads here to let me do a nice job without anybody knowing the difference. All right. Now I think I have seven beads. Awesome, good girl. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go over to the blue side from the brown side now. And again, I don't want to come through a bead. If you find yourself coming through a bead, back out. Because that's back not away. what you want. Back away. There's my, there's that little bugger. Right. And, you know, this is a, a fairly time labor, uh, time intensive technique to do. Um, it might take me a couple hours to do every two groups. So it's not something that's going to develop real fast, but it is a great carry-along project. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of those, everybody's got to have a project or two that they've done that's kind of a wow project. That when you wear it, other beaters come to you and they go, wow, yeah. that's hey. nice, yeah. hey. Yeah. And you go, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, I good. That. I can do all kinds of things. Okay, so I'm going to go up here. Oh, gosh, I don't want to come through that bead. So the risk of coming through the going through a bead would be to split the bead as I pulled my needle through because the needle eye is so big that if I really grabbed a hold of it, I might make a mistake that I was unhappy with later. Be sort of sad, right? Terribly sad. Terribly sad. All right, I'm going to take this tail in there one more time through those beads. Come out the other side and pull it up snug and I like to clip under a little tension and did you notice these really new neat new, new thread snips? Thread snips. We're going old school. Those are the thread snips we used to carry at the store. Right? I love them. So there is my necklace. Emily Miller. I just I am so in love with these colors I cannot tell you how excited I am to have them. such a good job. Look how pretty they are all together. Yeah, it looks great. Nice little pop with the turquoise and the purple. You know, you can wear these as a bracelet. If you yeah. wind it around, you yeah, need a little can. bit more length. But it makes a great necklace. Yeah. For over the head style, you're going to need about 24 to 27 inches of yeah. beadwork. Um, I, ch I used all uh, nine colors, I think we got. Or did we get ten colors? No, we got nine colors. I used all, oh, I have 11 colors. I used all the colors in mine. You were so, right? so terribly clever. Because it's so beautiful. And I yeah. allowed for little little baubles, because mm -hmm. this is what I like about the um, the trade beads. I like having those little random those little guys pop up. Yeah. Now, um, let's show, you've got some other things mm -hmm. for, um, before we move the camera. Sure. I'd like to um, talk a little bit more about inspiration. And patterns and things. And patterns and yeah. things before we, because we've got a few minutes. Yeah, we do. So, if you want a pattern with bead crochet, it's really fun it and easy. Fun. And since this is all based on six around, mm -hmm. um, all the patterns then would be based on six beads. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, this would be alternating one white, one black, one white, one black, mm -hmm. right? 
That's that barber pole kind yep. of feel to it. Right? This one has, a, this is a wide stripe. Mm -hmm. So three pink, three green. Three pink, three green. And you have this, Emily, in your mm -hmm. little cheat sheet. For I do. For those of you uh, yeah, um, these exact who came guys. in a little bit late, we're going to post this cheat sheet uh, in the episode notes, and we'll also post it in the bead shop uh, community page as well, so you guys can you see You have it that. over there. Oh, I yeah. do. It's right here. Yeah. So you can actually uh, play around with how you might want these stripes to go. And these kind of colors and these kind of stripes also very African inspired and would work really nicely. So I find sort of monochromatic kind of a little boring, but um, you know, you can play around with oh, whatever love, you like. I love that one. I oh, do you? It. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I don't know. I do. It doesn't, you know the, the patterns don't stand out enough well, for me. Well, when you look in my closet, what, what color right. clothes uh, do I Right, black and blue, no, I know, right. I know. Well, and green. Well, you and wear gray. a lot of green. green. I do. You know? So I gave these guys some little names, and the, here's the little directions with how many you might make. You know, you can, and you can do any combination of, of, of six beads will give you a, a pattern to play mm -hmm. around with. You can even reverse the pattern, have it go back the other way, mm -hmm. by just reversing the order of the colors oh, that you've picked smart. up. Yeah, and absolutely. And I really think that doing something, you guys, that has a little bit of a stripe to it, um, because now I am into my blue beads, and it's not so bad. You just want to make sure that you're always looking at six beads. Mm -hmm. That was my deal. You yep. really need to make sure that count is yep. right. The flip for me was, was always the, the kicker. Mm -hmm. That which really made it for and me. And you have all kinds of other tips oh, yeah. um, on that list yep. as well. So yep. those all look super handy. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, shall we wrap this thing I up? I think we're ready. Is there any questions, Brandon, you've got for us to get to the yeah. end? Oh, it looks, um, yeah. People are excited to try, ready That's to try. Some, yeah. some excitement. We um, a lot of love for the the different patterns. Mm -hmm. um, somebody asked about how to determine size. Yeah, there was one question I did want to ask oh, you. Um, uh, sure. About um, did you discuss how to determine size? Do these just slip on, no clasp? Yes, they just the bracelets or mm -hmm. the necklaces just slip on, no mm -hmm. clasp. And so Sounds maybe you tight. would just measure as you're yeah as you're crocheting yeah. along. Well, you can also you know. This is a, about an inch worth of beadwork, mm -hmm. so that was about six inches in that mm -hmm. pattern. Right? And then what I noticed when I use these six aughts, mm -hmm. and I'll toss that there, the six aughts, you need to make your bracelet a little longer. Right, because it takes up a little takes inside. Takes up more space. Mm -hmm. So when I made that one, that one's actually fairly tight on me. Yeah. And then when I made this one, this one is gigantic. It's pretty big. And right. you can see, you know where you were talking about that little mm -hmm. waist? Oh, that's that's my waist right there where I pulled it in a little tightly. So one thing you can do if you have a waist, you end up with a waist. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when we were back um, doing our elastic bracelets and we did the bead um, mm -hmm. to, to add to that, that little peyote bead? That's all this is. Mm -hmm. It's a little peyote bead and you can do a real pretty one and no one will ever know mm -mm. that that was anything but an addendum. And so you did it flat peyote and then you zipped it up I did. over the closure. Right over the closure. Terribly clever. Right? Look on this pretty one. This is just a, a rope of all one color beads. Really, mm -hmm. it looks very snaky and kind of um, deceptively perfect. It's mm -hmm. not. Uh, and then I made that little delicate bead mm -hmm. um, slider to go over it. Slider. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to tell you guys one thing before we move things over. And I'll um, show you what my kind of dog's breakfast is what I like to call it looks like here um it's oh i know what i know what else we didn't talk about really oh, what's that? we didn't really talk about thread color yeah we want to talk about thread color you know um and then i'll show you this for this particular sample that i made the um out of africa i used a dark gold and really you don't really seeing very much of this thread color mm -hmm. in here um you could use a gray a brown a blue or even a red. Yeah, um, you've got all those Ceylon colors. There. You might might want to play around with any of these Ceylon colors, right? The navy blue, I would love. It's a little dark, though. And if you're mm -hmm. just getting started, when you run into the navy blue beads and the navy blue thread, that might give you some fits, okay? Mm -hmm. So ha do it when you've had plenty of coffee and your eyesight's good, not tired, right. and all those things. So you really, so a contrasting, basically mm -hmm. a contrasting thread is a little easier to deal Absolutely. with. Absolutely. It's a little right? easier to see, and mm -hmm. seeing is what you have to be able to do for this, mm -hmm. right? Some good light. Yes, absolutely. Well, awesome. all right. So what else? We got questions? So let me just show you. Let me get to where, let's see. 
So I've ended up, I'm going to kind of try and get over here. Whoops. Oh, I almost, sorry you guys. Almost. We almost had a camera disaster. Am I back in the uh, you're close. zone? You're close. You're, you're a little perfect. bit there. Nope, nope. No, you, sorry, I moved it. Before. <laughs> sorry, Brian, you want me to move it back? There we go. Um, better? No, you're not in the. But you're you're gonna. Yeah. There. Yes. Okay. okay. So you guys, I wanted to show you what I was working on here while Emily was teaching all of that. This is about as far as I've gotten. Can you see that there? And so I think once, see how you can see with the colored rows that you can see your rows really get kind of a nice spiral. And as you start to get to the blue, you can still start to kind of train your eye to see that spiral. But notice how on the top row, and tell me, Emily, if this is, if this is right, how the top row that I've done, the beads sit that way before you flip. Correct. Right. This one is a little bit of an outlier, and mm -hmm. he's looking a little peculiar. Mm -hmm. um, but I would actually go for it mm -hmm. and not worry about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So it's the flip mm -hmm. when you flip that guy, and I do have six, don't I? You do. Uh, so I go under there. <sighs> See, it's really tight. I've been crocheting so tightly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. here we go. We're under too many threads. Yeah. Let's go under here. I think also it's that loop. Sometimes that loop gets a little twisted, mm -hmm. and if you yeah, that's perfect. If that loop is twisted, it's more difficult to get in there. Yep, you're perfect. So, you know, I know that this can be frustrating at learning this new technique, but just give yourself permission not to make this part look amazing. Well, right? You know, truly, you could actually once you got this going, mm -hmm. tie on your beads, uh -huh. the ones you really want to work with, right? And start going. Just right. keep going. And then right. you could just cut this off. Right, later. Yeah, because bead crochet mends itself. It, it heals mm -hmm. up. You know? So if I were to cut it... Mm -hmm. you want me to, do you want me to cut one? Yeah, would you? Sure. Yeah, shall we, you sure. guys? Why not? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Because I do want to see, once you get that established... That's my piece I'm leaving behind, right? right? Right. And then I just go on with this guy. And a little bead or two will come off this end, but then it'll stop. What? 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 <laughs> Crochet is pretty darn durable. So I would say then not to <laughs> you work. You never have to, to stop. Just, you never no. have to start again, actually. Yeah. You so just, can just keep going. Keep going. And let's say that I made a decrease and then I kind of decreased, then I can just increase, right? Just get a bead in there mm -hmm. and increase. And just keep going until yeah. it looks good again. Yeah. And then just cut that bad stuff off. Yeah. Right? So you can do it, you guys. I'm going to keep forging. a bad boyfriend. You just cut them off and yeah, move on. Cut them off and move along. <laughs> that was really, that was great. It's exciting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. All right, Bran, I'm going to hand this back over to you. Okay. And let's, let's get this show on the road here. Oh my goodness. I'm going to take off this necklace and put on my new necklace. Yes. Well, Maybe. next week, oh, you know what? I'm going to grab, I'm going to leave you for just a second. Where and I'm going to grab going? next week. Oh, you know grab them up. They're right week? there. I can see them. Mm -hmm. Well, Emily, I really? wore this shirt because I knew it would look good with these yes, colors. Yes, that just looks so good. Right? It's really great. So you guys, words of encouragement, just hang in there. Just keep going. Yeah, this is a broadcast that you're going to yeah. want to watch. Gita's pulling out her hair. Oh yeah. no, Gita, don't do that. <laughs> I think it's because of her uh, computer, though, not because oh. of the project. Oh, good. Um, I really think that you uh, just hang in there. Watch this broadcast several times. Emily and I are going to post that other, the just little, that little snippet mm -hmm. that's going to show her just doing that um, crocheting once over around, and over, over and, and over. over, and you'll get it. So remember your mantra and you'll yeah. be fine. Um, next week, we're going to toss some more seed bead stuff at you, mm -hmm. right? Beaded beads. Yes. We did these at the retreat. It we was did. kind of a hit and fun. Yeah. And I was feeling a little Christmassy. And yeah. so I picked out some colors that I thought were yeah. vaguely Christmas-like. And it's the necklace people have been asking all broadcast, M about this necklace. And this fun? is the same thing. Same We've just same. done it in some holiday colors. Mm -hmm. You can do it um, any color you like. Yeah. And we're also going to show you, it's our wooden beads that we have online, the English uh, 
the New England wood beads. Uh, New England wood beads. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to show how to dye them. Absolutely. Right? So yeah. we're going to dye so fun. the wood beads. We had a um, participant, I think it was Joanne, at the, at the retreat. No, no. Who was it? It was um, Lisa Yamamoto. No, no, no. Joanne, who dyed oh, her beads. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, she, she made dyed, a beautiful necklace. Yep, yeah, so some of the dyed wood beads interspersed with some of these guys. Yeah. We're going to have a great time next week. It's going to be really fun. The netting is great, and once you get these down... And, you know, start with a start with a small bead mm -hmm. to start with. Mm -hmm. It's it's actually not as small as you think, Right. Um, and it'll take you a few minutes. And I made some earrings. Yeah, those into but this earrings. is a, they were great, a great centerpiece bead, yeah. or you can hang it as an earring. Yeah. Um, or and the aforementioned Lisa, she right. was making them into Christmas holiday ornaments. ornaments. Yeah, yeah, they look really, really pretty. Yeah, yep, yep. So. Okay. And well, Gita, I saw your um, note about the end caps, uh, putting on caps, and we were, or cones. We will do that, I promise we you. Because we got some wire coming up, and that, that's perfect for that. Yeah, and we'll show you how to use, how to use the cones. Uh, we have a lot of people are, we just broke the internet with beaded beads. People are super <laughs> excited. Um, seed bead school. Seed bead school. And there was one question. Can Order the, your seed bead school. Can the, uh, these guys be used for beaded beads? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. We did get a request for some close-ups. You guys are moving them around, so I didn't oh, try to oh, do a zoom. Uh, but if you want to hold some up, I'll, yeah, I'll do zoom it. right sure. in. Brandon will zoom. They're really a fun... Let's go right down. And you can see right in the interior of that bead, it's that wood bead and how we dye it. And mm -hmm. just the dyed wood beads. It's kind of cool, They look it? amazing. How's so, that? Joanne, if you're watching, um, yeah. Yeah. send us a photo of that. Yep. Yeah of that necklace so everybody can see it. It was so killer. Right. Yeah, oh, my mom says she loves the knitted beads. She made one. Yeah. yeah. And Kim asked, are they really lightweight? Yes, they're mm -hmm. very lightweight. Um, I made them into earrings. They were really, really fantastic. The, the big one was maybe a little heavy for maybe, an earring. But, but I made this size. Yeah, you made yeah. the, the 20 millimeter one. Yeah. yeah, it was nice. And even this size. I'm going to teach in black and white. Um, and I'm mm -hmm. going to just do one regular little bead mm -hmm. so we'll have it to play around with mm -hmm. and then uh, really fun. show you what you can t play with the colors and these are just two colors of beads you know yeah well, and then three, uh, two colors and a gold right actually this is a bronze oh, the bronze. dark bronze Got and then it. the gold the gold but you can alternate how you put the colors on right mm -hmm. so it can be more gold or more bronze mm -hmm. or more blue or more red it's going to be really fun i yeah, can't wait you guys are going to love this one okay well emily Fun, huh? Epic. I you know. You did a great job. I, you know what I love about this technique, though? I love the portability of it. Mm -hmm. I love it when you wear it. And they're so comfortable to wear. It's like you're wearing nothing. Yeah. You know? It's it's slinky. It's appealing to your hand. It's appealing yeah. to your eye. It's a really cool piece. Um, you can do patterns or color block mm -hmm. or whatever it turns you on. I also want to recommend, we did our Bits and Pieces mm. project, which is kind of the precursor to this. So if you're just jumping in and you haven't watched the, the Bits and Pieces episode, go to our Facebook Live page or search it on YouTube, Bits and Pieces, be, uh, on our beadshop.com YouTube channel, and watch that one first. And like Emily was saying earlier, try some crochet without beads in it mm -hmm. yeah. and if you if you're then you can trans with, yeah with crochet you can transfer to your crochet with beads rome was not built in a day nor will your crochet proficiency no and so a little bit of practice yeah. will go a long way with for this sure. you guys okay for sure well before we wrap this up we have a fun uh giveaway for you uh we um carried these bead snips uh, at the bead shop when we were brick and mortar. Um, I know you have some in I, your I, toolbox. I, I have them. some in mine. I have friends who stitch and sew quilters, a lot of our quilters. I know, Ma, you have one of those in your quilting. Did my mom say that already? Somebody else Somebody did. Somebody said yeah. that. Actually, yeah. not even yeah. your mother. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody else. For yeah. sewing. They're really great. So we've got these in. But we thought it would be fun to just give those away today. Because yeah. why not? It's almost Christmas time. We want yeah. to give away a nice gift. You need a little so something, something. if you make, it's about, I don't know, about 10 after 12 now, uh, Pacific time. If you make an order in the next hour, and today is uh, Wednesday, still Wednesday, mm -hmm. December 6th, uh, and you write in your um, 
in your shipping notes. I love crochet, even if you don't quite yet. We know you will. You will. Um, we'll go ahead and throw in a pair of our new thread snips for you. If you want to buy more than one, if you have a sewer in your life or something, you great can, little stocking you'll stuffer. be yeah. able to uh, toss those in soon. We'll these have are airplane, them up. airplane safe, approved. Yeah. You can take these yeah. on the plane. And so they're not quite up on the website yet because it's a brand new product, but you'll see those um, up really soon. And of course, we have um, special special our specials as always for during December. We are doing a storewide sale. Um, it's on the front page of our website. Uh, you don't need. Uh, there's no minimum when you add bead 15 to your order. We knock 15 percent off. And then we also have bead 20 and bead 25 with different minimums for that. So um, it's all outlined right on the front page and on the banner up on our website at beadshop.com. So there's uh, I like these no ones. yes, nice. there's no uh, there's no limit. So go ahead and throw that bead 15 and you'll save 15 percent off. Um, and you can do that all month long. Uh, We've got some fun things coming up for Free Tip Friday. Mm. Uh, I'm going to be working with our new monthly mix. Ooh, I saw that it's going to be fun, mix. isn't it nice? Mm -hmm. It was really good. And so we're going to be uh, revisiting the tassel world oh, oh. with our monthly remember, mix. Remember what I was talking about earlier? Tasseling. Tasseling, right? Right. Because Emily was saying we need to make little tassels so you know that whose this scissors is scissors or whose. Whose or whose. So that would look great on here. So uh, join me for Free Tip Friday. And then next Wednesday, you guys, uh, we are going to netted bead it up. Yeah. And these go, once you get the technique down, yeah, you can't cool. have just one. They're mm -hmm. a little bit. Uh, They're great, addictive. and you've got an amazing handout for it yep. that we're gonna yep. um, all done. We're gonna add and stuff like that. So great work, amazing good day. work I today. I know. I love the crochet, and I hope you, you guys do look too. Look at that embarrassment just of riches. Really, on that looks great when you pile yeah, them all on. It looks amazing, and you know, you. I looked this morning. You made me. Some of you guys have seen it. My really super long fiftieth birthday piece. Which I couldn't quite It'll lay my up. hands on, but I'll I'll wear it again. For I know you wear one. it all the time. I do. So I wear it I all the time. It. I love it. I love seeing it. All right. Well, thank you so much, you guys, thank for joining us. We'll see you on Friday for Free Tip Friday, and next week for Netted Beads. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Kate and Emily. Bead Shop out. We'll see you soon. <laughs>